Oh, hello. Didn't see you there. Don't mind me. I'm just looking at what sizes of jewels we have. Because if I want to make a chromatic steel tool, then I should pick the first tool correctly. So do I want to start with a pick and put axing on it, an axe and put picking on it, a shovel, etc. So I'm just having a look, and then we'll make ourselves woo, chromatic steel tool. Okay, so we're definitely making a pick, because we've picked up axing and shovel, so let's do it. Chromatic, I mean, driftwood and rutodic, ah, right, rutodic mass is something that I discovered that I needed to make, so I thought I'd show you about it. It's not too expensive, because um, although it costs a perfect Rutodai and some Vault Essence, Rutodai comes from um, melting down gems anyway, so we do have a decent amount of it. It's not it's not terrible. Anyway, we're going to make a, a pick. I'm going to use our dual applicator to see how this goes. Zoom. Still 16 left. And this can now do ornate living gilded wooden. I don't know if we need it to do shoveling. Because the other thing I'm thinking of doing, I don't need all of this on my hotbar. Okay, this is going to go here. Um, the other thing it could do, I could have another tool, maybe a chromatic iron one so that I don't spend all that steel, and have that do sort of digging, right? We never tested actually whether you need picking to have to, to break a chest in the first place. There's only, are there only four types of chest? My brain's gone. I feel like there are only four types of chest. Now, axing is useful and picking because you tend to want to get to them, and that usually involves breaking wooden things like trapdoors and bookshelves, so maybe we don't need shoveling on here. Because this has got shoveling on it already, so I might as well just keep using this for that job. We might as well do this. What else have we got? We can put other stuff on it, of course. We could improve things. Gilded. Vanilla Immortality. Might be okay. Mining speed. To improve... Oh, that's probably really good, actually. We could have some trap disarm chance, which is not too bad. I've got Soulbound for exactly 15, and I don't really like it too much. If you die, I think you have to buy things back individually, and you can recycle the rest, now I think about it. So maybe we wanted to keep it. So that might be okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay with this, actually. And it's sort of spare capacity, right? So we could use the one that's guild... Uh, I'm not going to think about it anymore. <laughs> I've done enough thinking. There's our new chest breaker. So I made a pick and then didn't need to worry about whether it's going to be thick or not, but that's fine. And let's see what our next crystal will cost. Something I don't have, no doubt. Ender pearls. Any, any concrete. Play balls. We have seven ender pearls. That's a lot. Yeah, more than seven. In case you weren't aware. You make concrete by washing your concrete powder. Nice. That was a reasonably cheap crystal, considering it didn't make a little happy noise. But they are still currently quite cheap. I wouldn't object if it wanted to tell me to provide bat wings. <laughs> Plenty of bats. Now, a strategy here, which I didn't want to do, and I'm not really sure why, it just felt wrong, is that you can make crystals before you level up, and they will remain at the level when you made it. Which means that when you go into it, you will still benefit from the benefits that you get from being, for example, level 19, i.e. beginner's grace. So if you wanted to, you could make a whole bunch of level 19 crystals and just use them whenever you need to do a slightly safer or easier vault in the future. Um, don't think that's necessary. Just I couldn't be bothered. It's the only reason I didn't do that. Um, but it is a it's a valid strategy if you wanted to. So be aware if you're playing this yourself and for some reason using my videos as a, as an example rather than you know iscals. That's the strategy. Look, netherite, netherrack. I told you we would need it. We should have a farm. 
We do need to build another farm up there for potatoes. Uh, I, I don't have two lines of potatoes, actually. That's weird. But extra wheat. I don't really need the wheat now, because that's working. Let's pick all that up. And plant these potatoes. Okay, and then the last thing we have to do before we do a normal vaults, which are now level 20 and therefore more dangerous, remember, is to spend our expertise and skill points and I press K again instead of H, because you know me. We decided to save up this so that we could buy some speed. And I'm going to do it. Now, it's nice to be a bit faster, traversing the vault especially. Um, and I was tempted to get haste, but now that I've got this on here, and it is picking, uh, I've got efficiency on there, and 4.8 mining speed, I can use this one to also break spawners. And I will. Um, that should be really, really quick, basically. So I'm not worried too much about having uh, a passive bonus for doing that. We really need some more uh, chromatic iron because I do have a stackish of ore left, which will give me a bunch of raw. <clears throat> it's exactly a stack. It'll give me a bunch of raw, but we're going through it fast now. We should plan ahead, basically. And our expertise point, oh, that's a good question. Because we maxed out fortunate <clears throat> and experience doesn't seem that valuable right now because I've not been hurting for XP, basically, even though I keep dying by falling off. It's still been fine. Um, marketer restocked time in the black market. We should have a look at that before we go. Reduce the bounty wait period to 30 minutes. This is really only good at 3. Uh, lucky altar. That could be good for a skyblock world because it will reduce the amount of resources that we need to spend on it. There's a chance not to apply a negative modifier. We'll be wanting that soon, but not yet. And we haven't got any favour from any of them yet, <laughs> which is no fun. We should look into that, by the way. We haven't really followed up on that. So I'm wondering if Lucky Altar is actually what we buy purely because we're in a skyblock world. And then next time we can think about Infuser if we're going to be doing that more often. Yeah, let's do it. I'm going to have a look at that Angel Block, see how expensive it is. Oh, it's only an Echo Pog. Which is only eight pogs. <laughs> oh, sorry, two of them. And a phoenix feather, which is... Guild of chest loot? It must be above level something. 24 plus, yes. Yeah, so, very expensive, man. Uh, professionally, once again, I forgot to start recording. But here we go. New level 20 vault. We've got our posh gear on. We've got our new pick for breaking uh, chests and stuff. We're going west to east. What we're doing, finding monoliths. I believe we get a new vault type at level 20 as well. Uh, and if we die, we die forever. So let's try not to uh, die forever. Oh, it's working. How fast we are. Oh, It's so freeing to just be able to nip around the vault. The difference in speed when walking does not seem that great, but the difference in speed when sprinting is insane. <laughs> Uh, and our speed of looting is really good as well. If you're wondering, watching this video, what's wrong with your computer? Probably nothing is mine. It's the video. I mark this as something we haven't looted by doing that. Ooh. I will take ores. Too many ninjas. Plus, now I'm not going to leave any chests unbroken. <laughs> so I can't, can't throw stuff away inside the vault. I have to uh, have a sacrificial chest every now and then. Previously, not so big of a deal, because there was always something I wasn't breaking. Ooh, a monolith and an ore room. So that puts pay to the theory that I professed last episode. Hoping to eventually find my final pog gem. There's always one gem that are in Jesus withholds for your lack of piety. Yeah, I haven't found it. Oh, now we're getting breaks. Can't shoot them, apparently. Fair enough. Say fair enough. It's uh, horrible. Please don't do that again. I'll keep going on about it, but the speed boost. It's just... 
unparalleled. <laughs> It was definitely worth the four levels, especially since we, you know, ground through those four levels. We didn't really miss out on anything. I didn't feel like I needed to put points in any of my other things to, to deal with the vault during those four levels. I felt perfectly capable, just slow. <laughs> so, yeah, speed was really the missing stack. Oh, no, this is a really good investment. So I recommend it, that's what I'm saying. Oh, I didn't get a bounty, did I? It is. Complete any vault. We're well on our way to doing that. Oh, I should be um, looking for monoliths rather than looting. But that's okay. I'm enjoying the speed that I have and all of the abilities that I have. So let me have this one, okay? Does it tell you what theme you've got? Sort of afterwards. Is there a way of finding out what type of vault this was so that you can... I want to know what the augments do. The size of this joker. Um, for themes. Without having to use them to find out what the theme is called, right? This is. Quality of life question, then. I suspect there is no monolith in this room. But I don't object, because I'm doing it <laughs> myself, to myself um, looting. Important chests like gilded and stuff. So we've got a diamond shaped vault. So we are going back the way we came. Put this here so that I remember that this is the room on the main path. Go this way. Should have been doing that anyway because if I want to turn here, I can't find the main path in any other direction. So you're telling me, yeah, there's no way that's me missing every single time. What sort of noise is that? <laughs> Whoa, dude. Dude, rat. All that for those two <laughs> chests. It's very elaborate, two chests. Still, really cool. Pro tip maybe you can do the same trick with a scythe or a sickle, as it were, um, as you do for coin affinity. Just put all the affinities on it. You don't accidentally break all the blocks once you finish breaking the chest itself. Actually a dungeon. It doesn't seem much faster, does it, even with that extra speed on it? Ah. Very bad at not falling off of things in these little dungeons. Not having to spend all the time just... Opening chest, pressing the button. Opening chest, pressing the button. Saves so much. I'm worried about our remaining time in terms of finding the monolith and getting out. So, although I've looted a great amount here, including a whole bunch of ore, I hope I haven't accidentally put an ore in um, a sacrificial chest because it wasn't in my bag. I don't think I have. Because one thing we could do is just sort of leg it through every single room really quickly. See if there's a monolith right in the middle. And if there isn't, just move on. See, that's ter not a terrible strat, maybe? Just go parallel to the main path, right? So we find a monolith and then go back and loot. Ah, see? Worked. Absolute legend. Yeah, so this room needs doing. Upstairs, I think. More doors. I haven't even found a key piece still <laughs> for all this time. wonder if it's gated behind my level. The fact that I've not found a single one seems odd. I thought that you could find them at any level. Maybe I'm wrong. Where's all the POIs in this room, though? Hello. Secret places. Do me down there. Oh. <laughs> Let me out. Successful vault. We found all three monoliths and looted a great deal. Being able to break chests and being this much faster than we were. Very effective. These not really elite, but elite zombies. What's going on? Do not want. Oh, we cut it fine. <laughs> I like cutting it. No kiwis, though. 
That's really good. Awesome, awesome. Job done, I think. Uh, do I need a torch here? Maybe. I have built my bubble Vator. And I have reformatted my mob farm a little bit. And that's because it kept exploding itself. <laughs> um, because if a creeper gets shot, then it will take umbrage at this. Uh, and it will tend to explode to kill the skeleton that attacks it. And then, because it's a creeper and it's exploding, now it's exploding my mob farm. So we jump down here. Bubble Vator obviously has two directions. There's the up and the down. I've chopped this in half, just so that I can retreat from my mob farm easily. To be far enough away from them. So I've done this, where it's just attacking its feet. Um, and this way, the skeletons don't see me. They don't shoot me, and therefore they don't shoot... The, the creeper instead, which is the problem. So that's working. There's not as much space for the enemies to spawn, and spiders are a bit annoying because they get stuck in the roof thing, but you tend to know they're there because they're making a noise. It means I don't have to keep going up there and collecting endless amounts of squid ink, which is good. Because I have like a thousand or more of them now. It's too much. Also, is it's quicker. It still takes a while, but it's quicker. And it is spawning drowned. For some reason, we're spawning drowned as a result of this. I think they might be spawning on the soul sand at the bottom. But that's okay. I, I don't mind. Alrighty then. We've got two crystals to use up. And don't forget we've got our new carapace charm here. I'm not sure if this will take damage. But if this is permanent, then... It also says slot charm, but it, 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 it... Okay, it doesn't go in the trinket slot. I was hoping. So shall we make make a crystal go? We know that our current quest is to do something at level 24. That's when we start finding catalyst fragments. So we're going to have to progress past that. Just to be able to actually achieve this, which is uh, to apply a catalyst to a crystal. So we have to make the catalyst, which means we have to find enough catalyst pieces at level 24. So it's going to be a bit, a bit of time. Right. Do we want to put something on this crystal? We've got geode caves, we've got cave itself, we've got honey cave. Uh, and we could make a, a seal that you know tells it what to do. We've got to kill zombies. Which means we need to make sure that we don't go into a cave that's drowned, for example. right? So what we could do there is make sure that we go into the cave theme, for example. Let's do that. These things, we've got a few of them, and they're not... I'm sure at some point they'll be extremely important, but at this stage, I think it's okay. Goal is Benio to Benito, right? We need plenty of Bennies. We need Knowledge Essence. We've only got two Knowledge Stars. We've got 57 Knowledge Essence and a few Knowledge Stars. We need plenty of Bennies to put those together. We want to get, if we can, our final thing for a Pog. That would be awesome. Right, look at here. This is a new type of vault that was unlocked at level 20. I told you there would be one. This is a scavenger vault. You have to find the things above, listed at the top of the screen there. These come in various places. You can see the little icon next to them. Uh, and take them back to here, so now you've seen where they go. We're looking for coin piles, we're looking for ornate chests, and we're looking for mobs. We're also looking for mobs so that we can do our bounty. So... This is one of the reasons why the hunter skill is great and you want to be able to regret your choice often. Um, because that is by choosing by specking in the vault, you can sort of improve your ability to find the, the type of chests or whatever it is you're looking for to beat these uh, scavenger books. So Decent chance that we don't find scavenger vault, uh, don't find scavenger vault, that we don't succeed in scavenger vault today. Um, but if we don't, that's okay. It is one of the harder types of vault. See, why did that one go slowly? 
Someone explain in the comments why some chests break at sort of half speed. Also, we have a, a, a benefit. We have the bonus of gilded chests just lying around the place. But notice, now that we're level 20, we do not have a little star that means beginner's grace. So if we die, we die until we buy our stuff back. <laughs> Don't die. We have some mob essence already. So this um, this hand in works the same as the elixir. When you get your stuff, you give it to the altar there, and then when you've got all your stuff sorted out, whoa, <laughs> nice. Um, you can hand it in. Wait for 15 seconds, and you'll be teleported out. And if you leave, otherwise you don't wait. Pardon you. One thing about these uh, scavenger bolts is you'll notice that your inventory is going to get really full. Because you're picking up not just the stuff that you are looking for, but stuff you're not looking for. Um, most of which is useless, so you can take it with you. You can't use it in another scavenger vault, but you can recycle it. So you can get something out of it. You've been noticing throughout the series that it's been showing me on the bottom right screen as I pick stuff up. It's been showing me what things I'm picking up. This is because anything that goes into a bag or a pouch. You won't see it in your inventory, so it tells you that you picked it up, and that helps you keep track of things like your mob essences here. If you notice, by the way, this used to be 5, now it's 7. I'm guessing this is a level 20 change. Oh, nice. Turns out these are zombies. Your ability to loot fast really determines your ability to beat the scavenger bot. Um, and... I don't know if we have the speed required for it at the moment, sadly. Remember you cannot unspec, like no, you can't do your regret inside a vault. So you have to have regretted it before you go in. Whoa! Um, and then you can, you can select inside the vault, but you can't regret it. Ugh. How are we doing? We've got eight green mob essence standing on the wall, no sack, and one cracked script. We need to find a lot more um, coin piles of what's going Hardly got any. There's a lot more variance to scavenger runs than to any other type, as far as I've noticed, and I think that's good. It makes them. It, does, it makes them imbalance, <laughs> but I think the imbalance is a good thing because you can't just be expecting to win every single uh, vault that you go into. And that's kind of been our philosophy so far, you know. We go into a vault, we expect a loot crate and a bunch of XP out. And now that we're level 20, there's a new type of vault where we're not necessarily going to win. And based on how... Ooh, Stuff comes out of ores as well. So there should definitely be a hunter for ores. Um, based on you know how we haven't really found many coin piles so far, I hazard to say that we're unlikely to win this one. As a result, we should focus on the loot, specifically these ores, which is why I'm focusing on these ores. I do wish I'd used a different tool my chest pick now that I've started using it. Should have started with a sickle or something, I think. Uh, one crack strip. 13 mob essence. So we've done the mob essence. Now we need ornate chests. Coin piles. Stop hitting me. Shame it's not an ornate bolt. Not a shame that it's a gilded bolt. That's okay. We don't have to win it. Um, there's no real difference between the different types of vault in terms of winning them. So if we want a loot crate, we just keep going until we don't get a scavenger vault, or we get a scavenger vault with better RNG. That's fine. The good RNG of this vault is the size and quantity of these four POIs. So the catalysts that we're heading towards in our quest book are the sorts of things that could, for example, give us uh, an ornate vault or a gilded vault. Trouble is, you don't know until you've done it. 
It's not like the seals where you pick the seal that you put on it, you put the catalyst on it, and then it decides how bad your vault's going to be. Holy crap. Lost. Low on time. And given how many coins we haven't found, and therefore the lack of crack scripts. But we could get really lucky at the last minute, for sure. I suspect we are doomed to have our first... Well, not necessarily first. Is it our first incomplete vault? Maybe. We could get really lucky at this point, because I think I just saw a handing point in this very room. On crack script. Was that three? History! <gasps> And then we need one sack from ornate chests, which I just saw around the corner. We may even do it just by this last room having both ornate chests and coins in it. We've only got two minutes to leave. <laughs> I don't think there are any more ornate chests for me to... I really should have dealt with that lava. Huh? Don't tell me that's an ornate. Yeah, well. <laughs> it's not. Quest failed and we didn't find our final gem. We didn't die. <laughs> At level 20. That's a bonus. Level 21. And with that last, next new last final extra skill point, I'm actually going to put a point in haste. Because I'm still struggling with spawners. Deal of the confectioner. Objective cake hunt. That's brilliant. First of all, we can afford it. Second of all, we haven't looked at cake hunt yet. It's a vault type that you can only get by applying a seal for it. What's the recipe for this? Not too bad. So the cake hunt is fun. And we'll look more into it when we actually get there. But essentially in the cake hunt, you're going around finding cakes in each room. And as you find them, it alters the state of the vault, the, the modifiers of the vault. Uh, you don't recycle them. You use the other thing that we haven't got yet. Soul diffuser. Which is black chromatic steel. Oh, that's right. <laughs> and a vault recycle. How do I get one of those? I realise I could go into the nether, but I don't know if I can sort of... I don't know how guaranteed a wither skeleton is to spawn in the nether, but we haven't been there yet. Which is scary. <laughs> it's a very scary prospect. I'd like a way to get back in case everything goes horribly wrong. <laughs> so I still don't think we've ever seen any Ashium. So that's RNG Jesus's holdout this time. Oh no, here's some. Do you know what? We might have all the stuff now. I thought we were down by one. That's exciting. Okay, look, we're not complete losers. We did get some more gear just from looting chests. Remember not to loot chests around all that lava next time, though. Right. Apparently, we are now capable of pogging. Now, I recognise there's a chance we fail to get one when we break these. I'm hoping that if that happens, it's not the ones we don't have any of already. Nice. One... Close. Pog. Right. With this pog, Ivy wet. No, Ivy make a draw controller. Let me figure out how these work. Two draws and some extraordinary line moon miles and even more open. So for this we need eight and thirty-two again. We're gonna make that. We've only got four of these left. The game giveth and the game taketh away, I'll tell you that. This place is now essentially useless, huh? We don't need these blokes. But they're impossible to get books. But, you know, here they are. I guess if you need some uh, emeralds, we can always get get some from the farmer. I've actually forgotten that the zombie killing quest gave us Benitoite gems as a reward. So that's pretty good. This jewel is terrible. And we've got some more chromatic eyes. So let's make another venture into a vault, trying to get some more steel. So that we can make... <laughs> I love that we managed to make a pog and we still have a problem because we don't have enough chromatic steel. It is ridiculous. Let's see if any of these will uh, give us any. Crimson stem is actually something I have. 
Because there's wood here. This came from a raw vault. So it's gettable. And you wanted 31. And I have 33. So here you go. Thank you. Claim reward. And we might as well uh, find 18 silver scrap in the vaults. Hey, we've got the squishy theme again. I think we found uh, an augment to make it this theme as well, didn't we? What do we do in a monolith vault? We scour for the monoliths, going in a straight line through the vault. As we find them, we tag them, and then we come back and loot everything that we didn't loot on the way. Is this a shop? No, it's a light village room. I see. I'm so excited to find a shop that everything I see is a shop. Even when it's not a shop. <gasps> Pumpkin! Aha! Whoa! Oh, I just realised, actually, I'm supposed to be using the the steel pick for this. Is that any faster? It doesn't seem any faster. Is there just a maximum limit to these now? That's, that's fine. I just need to know. Cut of salmon. <laughs> so that's why I don't want this to be a pick anymore. <laughs> that's really annoying. Got all that. I don't want any of this. I'm going to say it's faster to use the new pick, because it should be, and if it's not, I'm going to be sad. So. It's a big spiral to get out, and I've got monoliths to find. This is a cool room, though. Glad I put the effort in. And why couldn't I find this when I was in a scavenger vault that needed ornate chests? <laughs> I might have picked up a decent quantity of raw carbon from this thing, which would be great, because... Whoa, steel, right? Whoa, nice. I haven't found any monoliths yet because of all this exploring. You know what? It's nice to spend some time in a room that you don't see very often. Monolith. Oops. Yikes. Oh, I'm immune to lava. Well, yay. How are we doing on our bounty? We found one silver scrap in all of that. <laughs> Not sure where it comes from. Let's have a look when we get out. Finally we got our pumpkin. Not from where I expected to either. <laughs> look at all this gear. That's insane. That's a decent chunk of carbon, isn't it? Oh, right. Do you know what? Let's start with the reward. <laughs> 71. 74. 12. Tiny item rarity check. That's a lot better. That's actually also a lot better, but we don't need this. Look at this. Unbelievable. Look at that amazing axe. It's uh, terrible in terms of damage. We did get a lot of gear, but none of it is much better than what we've already got. Which is expected. We've had a long time to isolate the cream of the crop. And it won't be until we actually get much higher level stuff that the cream of the crop goes up. And silver scrap comes from gilded chests and wooden chests. Is there a percentage? Oh. So now we know. We need to look for gilded chests to complete this bounty anyway. That'll do it for this episode. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. In the next episode, I'm hoping to maybe use that pog that we made. That's going to be very useful <laughs> because putting things manually in these drawers is boring. And I haven't shown you yet the main benefit of storage drawers, which is you don't have to do that, as long as you've got a pog that uh, runs more vaults, because that's the game and also we have a quest to get to level 24 and start playing fused catalysts, and then whatever else we feel like doing, I suppose we can also build our little snowman we should do that, alright, thanks for watching I hope you've enjoyed it, hope you'll join me next time I've been Archus. this has been Vault Hunter Skyblock, I'll see you next time